Well, I guess that um, keeping customers happy is pretty key to keeping your business healthy. Uh, Mitel uh, are going to tell us how being agile can improve customer experience. So would you please welcome uh, Marek Vasilevsky. Marek, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I haven't tripped, haven't fallen, and I haven't broken anything, so it's a very good start for me. It's quite a large stage, so I'm not quite sure exactly how to act, whether I should be running around like uh, Lee Evans, or whether I should be standing in one place looking fairly miserable like Jack D. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you've sat through fairly long two days, and I feel I kind of got to know you all a little bit better, so I hope you indulge me, but I'm... I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm feeling a little rattled at the moment. I had a, quite a bit of experience over the last two days, so I suppose I can't really keep you hanging, so I'll elaborate. So if you forgive me if, over the period of uh, my presentation if I stumble across one or two words. So I was, um, I was actually commuting um, to our uh, office in, in Bishopsgate yesterday, and uh, as you do, I was standing on a fairly busy uh, underground train and I see myself as a fairly average individual and you know I stood there fairly packed train and um, across from me there was a fairly large uh, individual and he kept on giving me this evil stare and the further we went down the journey the progressively the worse the stare got and I got obviously a little bit concerned and as we were moving further and further and further along the journey um, happily to uh, um, I can tell you that we got to a point where he got off the train and as he got off the train he actually bumped into me and me being a fairly wary global traveler the first thing I did is I patted myself and um, my wallet was gone so before he actually got the opportunity to jump off the train, I managed to grab him and um, I've got his jacket and we're tugging and pulling at each other and as you can imagine, everyone on the tube is helping me, yeah? Of course they are. Um, and we're pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging and the next minute I've got his jacket, he's on the other side, the door's closed and the train goes and he falls off and stumbles on the, on, on the platform and... Um, I've got his jacket at least, so we get to the next station, I pull the jacket in and I'm patting it down and I'm looking for my wallet and unfortunately the wallet isn't there, so I'm looking for a policeman and they're always around when you need them. Um, get, get to the above, you know, we get to the platform eventually and as I get there my phone rings and I notice it's, it's my wife. So I'm finding this as an opportunity to vent, obviously, and she's like, hello honey, how you doing? I'm, I'm saying, I'm... I'm you wouldn't believe what kind of a day I've had. She says, yeah, yeah I bet. You left your wallet at home. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, before, we, before we start, could, could I just ask you very quickly to just all stand up? Shake yourself around. Now, okay, now that I've stopped messing around, you can sit down. I'll, I'll get to the point as to why I've done this. And this is not to exercise the power as a speaker, but literally to prove a point at a later stage. Um, having Welsh heritage, obviously not me personally, with a name like this, you cannot have a Welsh heritage. But referring specifically to Mitel, I thought it's a perfect opportunity to perhaps give you an introduction to an organization that has got strong Welsh backgrounds and that contributes to the, to the local economy. Um, and also, at the same time, um, perhaps just take the chance to, to answer some of the questions that have been asked um, throughout the course of the last two days. So, Mitel is an organization that has been around for a number of years, 40 to be exact, and you might have heard that over the last a um, number of months there's been a press release where Mitel made another, yet another acquisition in the market and we acquired a company called Astra, which obviously built onto our heritage. And the reason why we've done that is really to look at the complementary technologies um, that will help us empower you as the customer and your customers going forward. 
As a company, we are now um, about $1.2 billion strong. We presence, uh, pre we've got presence in over 100 countries. We've got in excess of about 60 million customers. 652,000 of those are actually cloud-based. And in the last quarter, we've increased the cloud presence by about 65,000 seats. And that's a fairly significant uh, increase within, within that space. Equally, what a lot of people are not aware of is locally, where uh, about 12 miles from here in Caldecott, we've got our EMEA HQ, and from that HQ, not only do we obviously support um, our channel community, but equally we provide and have a very strong service arm. And um, as you can see by the stats, uh, we service quite a large amount of customers, not only within the UK, but throughout the EMEA. And that's very important to the local community. We employ um, lots of men and women of different, of different backgrounds with different set skills. <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to put this up there is I believe that, as you must probably heard from Terry Matthews, from an organization that started off from 4, 000, uh, a loan of $4,000, these statistics are fairly impressive, and certainly statistics that we are very, very proud of. So being a forester accredited or recognized organization, I thought I'll turn to them to provide some of the statistics. And whilst it's true that we today live in a digital age, it's equally important to recognize that we live in the age of the customer. And there are a number of, there are actually four key imperatives according to Forrester that are, that are important to all of us and to all of our customers. We need to look at transforming the customer experience. And I'm not just talking about the way that the customer purchases from you, I'm talking about the whole experience from cradle to grave, how you interact with them, how they purchase from you, what feedback they provide you, and how they manage to contact and speak to you on a daily basis. We, I'm sure you've heard lots of uh, pre previous speakers talking about embracing the mobile mind shift, and this is equally as important to us as it is to anybody within this specific industry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have heard or are aware of the, the curve of adoption and innovation? Just a show of hands. Right. So. This is a very important thing, and the reason why I asked you all to stand up and sit down um, isn't, as I said, to, to try to exercise my power as a speaker, but to demonstrate a very simple thing, and that is that there were one or two people within the, within the hall that stood up immediately, and when that person stood up, a number of you followed. And what I'm referring to is that if you look at the first 2.5% of the adoption and innovation curve, those are your early adopters. Those are the people that stand six hours in a queue to typically embrace some form of a new technology, to purchase a phone that now comes in blue, yellow, and green, as opposed to just silver. Then obviously what you look at uh, further on, you've got your, your early adopters, then you've got your early majority, late majority, and then some of you didn't stand up. I'm not going to say that you are the laggards, but those are the people in our industry that the only reason why they don't buy digital phones is because rotary phones are no longer available. And then the last one, the big data, and, and I know there was a speaker previously to, to me uh, early on this morning who spoke about the, the adoption and the use of the big data. Blurt. Blurt, I think, was one of the organizations that was men mentioned early on. The importance of big data and what you do with that big data and how you recognize um, your customer movements is, is extremely important. Right, so we, we need to look at some of the big, big challenges. And the big challenges, whether you are in a public sector organization or corporate across, the business challenges tend to be exactly the same. I suppose what you really need to be asking yourself is, you know, how do I differentiate from my competitors? What makes me different? How would I transform my customer experience or the customer experience of, of my customers? Equally, we've got to recognize that there are external and internal forces that are acting on us, the likes of retaining local resource. In other words, um, some of the 
some of the graduates coming out of university, where previously you would come to a work to get the latest and the greatest in terms of applications, majority of the time what you find now is that you'll find those applications at home. So how do you retain that skill set? You know, is it bring your own device? Well, we at Mitel believe it's not maybe not necessary as much as it is bring your own device, it is, is choose your own device. So coming out of university, I've got a device of choice, but I want my employer to pay for those calls, and I want my employer to, to pay for me negotiating on that particular device. But equally, when I leave, I want to be able to retain that device as my personal device. And that rings true right across all of the verticals that, that we work in. And then retaining customer loyalty. Whether we like it or not, the most important bit here was we all in business to create and generate revenue, but also to generate and create loyalty, to retain the customers that we have. And it's not only for, it's, this does not only ring true from Mitel's point of view, but whether you're in a public sector or corporate sector, your customers and how you treat your customers and how loyal they are to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the other thing is, um, Mitel subscribes to something called the ZMOT. Now, this is not an Eastern European uh, swear word of any sort, I assure you. It actually stands for zero moment of truth. Now, if you ever got you know, five minutes in your spare time, I encourage you, have a look at it. So zero moment of truth talks about a new factor that ultimately um, influences the customer behavior, where previously the customers would come to you to get the latest and the greatest, and uh, they wanted a bit more information. Now they've got the ability of researching all of that live through, uh, through digital media. So zero moment of truth changed the way that we treat our customers, changed the way that we as a supplier or a manufacturer interact with you and your customers. I'm not sure whether you're aware, but 158 um, out of customers that have got a click through social media email embedded in there, they've got a 158% better click, th click through rate than an email that doesn't have those uh, capabilities. So we do live in the age of the customer, we do live in a digital media, and the stats up there clearly indicates the behavior towards those has clearly changed. So how can we help you? Ladies and gentlemen, ultimately to us, it's just making sure that three things are being covered. That we provide you with smooth and consistent customer interaction, that we provide you higher customer satisfaction, and, as I said earlier, we're all in business to generate revenue and improve that revenue going forward. To simplify our portfolio and to simplify the way that we go to, to, to market with our ecosystem and we, with our range of partners, we've really simplified the portfolio. So when we're talking about three key, uh, three key points here, we're ultimately talking about my voice, which is the ability to, which is the, the core portfolio of Mitel. We're talking about my contact center, which is pretty self-explanatory, and my collaboration. And that usually comes in a, in a range of various applications. The underpinning model here is that we will give you the ability to take all of those different components and deploy them in a in a means that makes sense to you, whether it's on-premise, whether it's in the cloud, being public or private cloud, or whether indeed it's in a hybrid model. It's kind of irrelevant. The freedom of deployment and the freedom of choice is, is there for you. So it's a more of a consultative approach as, as opposed to being more dictatorial. The thing to recognize here is that business leaders have already made a choice in terms of software. And that software typically comes in a, in a sort of a range of frameworks. So you might be a Microsoft house, you might be a Google house, you might have a CRM or ERP systems in place. What is imperative is that you choose the right partner for yourself that will ultimately interlink with those existing frameworks and then provide you software solutions such as Mitel that will be able to be deployed through either the use of public cloud or private cloud, or indeed, as I said earlier on, through the hybrid model. 
Although we do manufacture devices, we do recognize that the choose your own device, bring your own device, and being a device agnostic is very important. So all of our applications, all of our portfolio is ultimately there for the end user to choose and to be deployed any place, any time, anywhere on any device. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to cover this point off very quickly because I think um, from our industry point of view, this is most probably the single-handedly the most important application um, that's kind of revolutionized the way that we, we do business and the way that you interact with, with your customers. So the My Contact Center element is no longer being viewed as previously perhaps as a sweatshop somewhere of, uh, in, in remote places where you got inundated with calls you know, on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening. What this allows you to do, it puts you in control with your customer, it gives you live statistics, it gives you the ability to really enhance the way that you do business and how you uh, interact with your customers. So in summary, um, we are a recognized um, industry leader. We um, simplify communications through, through the portfolio that I initially identified. And we've got flexible deployment methods that will ultimately make it a lot easier for you. In closing, I would encourage each and every one of you, I would also invite each and every one of you to come up to uh, the cloud center, which is located one floor up, where we can share some of those experiences um, and success stories that we've had, such as the uh, uh, Resource Wales organization. So with that, I thank you kindly for your attention. Thank you.